All right, so today is engine rebuild day. Uh, if you didn't see, the other engine, upon completion of the buggy, dropped a valve. Now, these valves are pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty familiar with the 2JZ and 1JZ engines, and these run very similar. Uh, it's got a, a valve spring, and then it's got these valve retainers. So these retainers are what gave out and made the valve drop into the engine. It messed up the piston, and it destroyed the head. So regardless, I was going to have to replace a piston and a head. Now, if I had found a, a cheap engine, I may have just replaced the whole thing, but I found replacement parts pretty cheap. Um, these engines were made for 20 years, so this whole piston assembly was like 20 bucks, and I was able to get an entire head with all the valves in it for $80. Now, all the valves are already in here, so I don't have to get the valve tool. Um, I don't have to worry. Hopefully, I won't have to worry about uh, clearancing the cams. And, yeah, these are set up. There's no rocker arms. It's just uh, a cap over the valve spring. So, i got to pull the whole motor because I have to pull the oil pan off to get to the crank. Now, I'm just going to use the piston. I'm not going to use the entire connecting rod because I don't want to have to take it, my crank to the machine shop and have the bearings matched up to it. Uh, the tolerances here are a lot tighter than the tolerances on the wrist pin. So I'm gonna pull it apart and just swap wrist pins, swap the actual piston, replace the head, and it should be pretty easy and pretty fast. All right, so the motor's pulled. It took about 40 minutes but I'm doing everything slowly and methodically so that I don't drop another valve. <laughs> and when you're working with engines, you really should take your time and make sure everything's right. You should never be in a hurry or be in a time crunch. All right, so the first thing to come off is the valve cover. There you go. And you'll see in here, I only have the chain wrapped around one side because I just quickly put it back together. Now these cam caps, are very specific to the side and very specific to the order in which you loosen them and tighten them. If you loosen all the end ones first, you're going to bend your cam because this is under so much pressure from those valve springs. So make sure to keep this very neat and very organized when you disassemble it. All right, so we've got all the the bolts pulled off the pan. So let's pull that out and take a look in here. Lots of cool stuff. So oil pickup. Here's the crank right here. So this is the bottom side of that number three piston that we need to replace. This is the bottom side of the connecting rod. Now the big crank runs across here. So if we were to replace the entire piston and connecting rod, we'd have to pull the crank and mic it and check for clearances so that uh, we don't mess up the bearing or spin a bearing. So we're just going to replace the piston for that reason. Now these little motorcycle engines are just basically car engines. So if you've ever had the interest of working on cars or exploring one of these, this thing is so small you can move it around. Uh, they're pretty straightforward and the service manuals are easy to follow. So yeah, let's pull that connecting rod. All right, uh, moment of honesty for you. Um, I'm pretty familiar with car engines. This is my first uh, crotch rocket engine I've had apart. So when I needed to replace the piston, I immediately headed towards the bottom because that's how you get access to the crank. That's how you pull the connecting rods. Well, I pulled this off 
and found out that you do not remove the connecting rods through the bottom like a car. Took a look at my replacement piston I got. The bolts are on the top. Yeah, so we got to pull the actual, uh, they call this the block, case, block, head. So we got to pull the block off and put the pistons in and then drop the block onto the pistons. Now, usually I'd be pretty mad and I'm a little upset that I didn't know better, didn't, didn't study more. But luckily I found the oil pan is missing the gasket. So uh, the silver lining is that I'm gonna have a gasket on here. This isn't gonna leak oil. Uh, all during the test runs, it leaked oil. And I thought it was just because there was some bolts loose I couldn't get to. Turns out it was missing the oil pan. So get a new gasket on here, we'll get it flipped up, and then we'll start taking apart the top. Now, a good habit to get into, and you'll see me use this on every single bolt I tighten on an engine. I torque every bolt to specification. And I always use a star pattern, whether it's needed or not, or whether it prescribes it or not. I highly recommend doing the same thing. Um, these bolts here are 10 Newton meters, which I believe is about uh, 14 foot pounds. 14 foot pounds of torque is very, very hard to calibrate with your uh, with your muscles. So get a torque wrench uh, before you even think about taking an, an engine apart. The tolerances are way too tight and it's all engineered around those. So that's it. There's your PSA. All right, first of all, I told you wrong. Uh, Newton meters is the other way. So 10 Newton meters is like seven, seven and a half foot pounds. So don't think that uh, foot pounds are lesser than Newton meters. All right, so now we're to the guts of it. So we're gonna pull the head gasket. So this timing chain, it's super important you don't let this fall into the engine. Um, in all likelihood, you'll be able to fish it out but you don't really want to take that chance. So, uh, yeah, that's why it's been a while. Um, I had this part a few days ago, but I did not have the gaskets. And the quickest way to ruin an engine and spend and waste a whole lot of time is to tear apart an engine and not replace the gaskets. So I ordered the head gasket because I knew I was pulling the head. I did not order the block gasket, and I ended up needing that oil pan gasket so it all worked out and this this shouldn't take too long anyway all right so now we got the block here we're gonna have to remove the the coolant lines they come off with the block and we're gonna have to remove the oil oiling line All right, looks like we're ready to pull it. I'm gonna try to let you see as much as I can, but I do have to uh, concentrate on getting this off. There we go. Came right off. This is the block. We start getting our first look at what's going on in here. Um, here's our bad piston. Now this is actually gonna be pretty easy. It's seen better days anyway. There we go. Um, so now I'm going to reclock this to make it easier. Um, we've already turned the engine and we're gonna find top dead center before we put the cams back in anyway. So it's not gonna hurt anything to, uh, to reclock it to make it a little bit easier. Oh, look how fun that is. So we're just turning to 180. Cam chain still on the gear. Everything's still good. Body gives us better access to this wrist pin here. That's cool. All right, now the manual says that to not reuse wrist pins. To me, that means take it out very carefully because it's just a retaining clip. Now while you're in here, you can check all your tolerances if you want. 
um, for your wrist pin, for your connecting rod. So now we can just slide this wrist pin out. There we go. There's a connecting rod. Here's the piston. Note the orientation. Here's the wrist pin. No signs of wear, but since it fell on the floor, I'm gonna give this a really, really good cleaning. Slide the wrist pin out. The only thing you need, really need to match up is the wrist pin. And the wrist pin is pretty universal and doesn't have a lot of friction on it. That connecting rod does. There's a lot bigger of a moving surface on it. Now we'll check it when we get it on here, but wrist pins aren't machined to the same, same standards as a connecting rod. And there we go. All right, so next we gotta get the wrist pin clipped back in, but before you do that, you're gonna wanna tuck something around these skirts so that if you don't get it in, it doesn't go down into the engine. There. It's in place. Now, something I am gonna do that the book does not say is I'm gonna make sure all the compression rings, the open ends are not close to each other at all. An easy way to lose compression in an engine is for those rings to get lined up and then you just get incredible blow by when really nothing's wrong with your engine. Okay, so there we go. It's time to get the new gasket and put the block back on. Um, I'm showing you guys this so you know how easy it can be. As long as you follow the manual, step by step, read it twice, read it four times, um, read it while you're in the bathroom, and then read it again so that you know every word of that, this can be very, very easy. Oof, look at that. That's pretty. Yeah. I'm going to smooth this out. We're going to check the, uh, the block, too. Make sure we have a nice, clean mating surface. It can be discolored, but it just can't have stuff on it. And like I said, this engine was recently rebuilt, not by me, but the guy I bought it from said he did a fresh rebuild on it. He seemed like a pretty capable guy. But now I'm gonna double check everything because the oil pan gasket was missing. That's not a sign of a good rebuild. And we are getting very close to the hard part. Oh yes, there is a hard part. Now the block is in bad shape. See all this stuff stuck to it? I'm gonna have to get a razor blade and clean that up. There we go. That looks a lot better. So that's all cleaned up. All right, so let's get the block gasket on. Here's a block gasket. Uh, you'll see 3TJ is stamped on the top side and it also has up stenciled into the mold. So the up is going to go towards the intake. All right, so now here's the block. Now, if you take a look, you can see the actual cylinders themselves are chamfered. So this is basically emulating a compression tool. So the instructions say that you can just put this on without a compression tool, a cylinder ring compression tool. So I'm gonna grease these up real well and I'm gonna give it a shot. There we go, look at that, slides right on. This is fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. There we go, so I got the inside ones in. 
And this is why I turned it 180 out. So that I can get these on the ends. Could you imagine trying to do these with it on the inside instead of the outside? With everything in the way? And after you get all the rings lined up, it's just a matter of pushing it down into place. And lined up on your alignment pins, which seems to be, uh, there it goes. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, now we're just gonna make, bring it back to top dead center and make sure the cylinders or pistons are moving smoothly. There's top dead center right there. You can see one and four are all the way out. All right, here's our head gasket right here. It's got the same up stenciled in. There you go, you can see it there, up. All right, you wanna maintain positive control of your timing chain all the time, at all times. All right, now it's time to get the new head out. Make sure the bottom's cleaned out. This is filthy. This is filthy. All right, I'm gonna clean this up. I'll be back. All right, I'm just gonna use the box that it was shipped in. What I've got here is some 501 two-stroke gasoline mix. It's just my chainsaw. And I've got a nylon brush. Rule of thumb with brushes is don't use anything harder than what the material is made of. And this is an aluminum head, so it kind of limits our options. There we go. That's a little better. Now it's not going to be perfect because it's an old motor. It's an old bike. So first, get our timing chain. I like that a lot. All right, so let's bolt this head in. Every spot is going to get a washer and a nut. All right, once all those are in, all this stuff needs to be oiled. So I will just get some oil, pour it in each of these holes. Oh, too much. Just a couple drops will work. I also like to put a little bit of a puddle where the cams go because we'll use that to uh, grease up the cams and the cam retainers as we put those together. Now there is a very specific tightening sequence and it's a two-step tightening sequence. So first thing to do is snug them up. And I like to follow that sequence even when just snugging them up so I get a, a heads up for the pattern. Uh, most of the time you work your way from inside out on an engine. All right, so grab your book, grab your torque wrench and go to town. Initial setting is 20 Newton meters for me. So ease it on in there. Oh, that's, that's gonna be frustrating. There's 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. You guessed it. Twenty. And now our second setting is thirty five Newton meters. Lock it in. Go for another round. I won't make you watch this. All right, now comes the awesomely fun part. The cams. So do the exhaust side first. I don't think there's a preference other than your own. 
And those pools of oil I got, I'm going to use that to grease up all the journals. You don't want to put these in dry or else you might spin it on your first startup, which would be bad. Now we can get our cam in place. So there is some stuff you're going to have to pull off the old head, especially if you buy a used one. On this one, it's these locator dowels or pins, whatever you want to call them. Now the tension on this engine comes from the back side. Um, when the back side's tight, then the front end's going to be your tensioner. So everything is aligned by that back piece. And then you put on your cam cap. We use our pool here. We're gonna grease these up too. I don't know if these engines are all the same. Like I said, this is my first time ever working on a motorcycle engine. Look at that. That's pretty. All right, I just went ahead and pulled them all because that head's garbage anyway. I'm gonna have to just toss it. There we go. Let's get another cam cap. Pop it on there. All right, so working from the inside out, we're just going to snug them, snug them up just a little at a time. If you get too aggressive, you could bend your cam, and you don't want to bend your cam. Now, I'm, I went ahead and tightened this down instead of putting the other cam in, um, kind of deviating from the directions, because the back side of my chain is tight, and my alignment marks are perfect. Pulling this down into and, and seating it, is just going to give that extra bit of clearance to get the intake cam in. All right, I'll torque them after I get the intake cam in. So, same deal with the intake cam. Get all your journals greased up, and this is going to point away from the center. We can get rid of our safety wire. No fear of it dropping in now. So this one's kind of weird. You gotta get the chain on about where you think it's gonna be. And then just kind of slide it forward. And there it goes. So now we can check it with the cap. See how our alignment marks look. Now as this pulls down, it's gonna rotate the cam up, which is gonna put that exactly in it. Another cam cap on. Cam cap. Insurance. <laughs> All right, check that out. Timing mark aligned on the exhaust side. Timing mark aligned on the intake side, but they're slack in the chain. I think I'm a tooth off. There's only one way to be sure, and that's to install the cam chain tensioner. This is the cam chain tensioner. Easy enough, right? So first thing we have to do is reset it. You can't put this in without it being reset. It's spring loaded. So careful as you get towards the end of the threads, there it goes. Now you wanna release, release this, and push your plunger back in. See that? Then you want to install it. They were kind enough to put the word up on this. Now the spring, which does the tensioning, goes in here. Okay, it still didn't loosen up and we didn't hear the ratchet go. So here's what we can do to get it all snugged up. There we go, it is out of time by one link. All right, so if we have a look, 
This cam is completely perfectly lined up. This cam is not. So it means we need to go back a tooth on our chain. Um, that slack turned out to be the tooth we were missing. We can't have it out of time, so we gotta pull this off. That's why I don't cinch them down until it is properly in time. Eight hours later. All right, so I moved it one tooth. Let's check our timing. Uh, it's top dead center. The exhaust cam lined up. The intake cam lined up. So now I'm just gonna torque all these and I still have to put this little Duma Giger on. Um, I'll torque them all first because removing these inside four bolts is not gonna have a huge impact on this if all the rest of them are tight. Just my way of making sure the cams stay good. And there you have it, folks. One piston replaced. The engine's ready to go back into the cross cart. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Big open hole. We need to put this there. And then we gotta drive that. Finally. I still can't believe I finished this thing and blew the motor. Oh well. When you can fix anything, you have to fix everything. It's just kind of how it goes. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. All right, it's now the next day. Uh, I assembled everything and I triple checked everything. Um, what I think happened last time is the number three coil plug was undone. So I think it was just pumping fuel into number three without firing it. And when I caught it, I just plugged it in and kept running it. And I think all that fuel built up in there caused a big explosion and popped those valve retainers loose. So my fault, um, I definitely double checked everything. So uh, yeah, let's give it a try. I'm not gonna sit in it to try. I'm actually gonna stand kind of out of the way. <laughs> so let's... Let's get it ready. Here we go. That's pretty all right. That's pretty all right. I didn't expect it to start that quick. It must have had fuel left in the uh, the bowls of the carburetor. Idle seems okay. Yeah. How about that? There's no valve chatter, there's no cam chatter, which is good. It means we don't have to shim those buckets. Let's see if it's ready for some gas. Holy smokes. Wow. That's not bad at all. That's not too bad at all. Well, I guess now we just button it up and, and see about a test drive. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.